Right now, as we welcome Vice President Joe Biden and Congressman Paul Ryan. We're going to listen to the debate, and we're going to send a lot of messages back and forth about things that we think are potentially worth fact-checking, things that we say, uh, that doesn't seem right. Uh, let's check that out. And then we're going to try and uh, assemble it all into a story and publish it sometime in the wee hours of the morning. Well, what we do is pretty simple. It's 90%, 95% old-fashioned, what we used to call shoe leather reporting before the Internet. We pull out those statements that are factual and apply reporting to assess whether they're true or false or somewhere in between. If you like your health care plan, you can keep it. Try telling that to the 20 million people who are projected to lose their health insurance if Obamacare goes through. There's a claim that so-called Obamacare is going to uh, force 20 million people to lose their insurance coverage. And uh, the independent government reports about that uh, put the number at less than 5 million. I'm not quite sure why they keep citing that particular number. It's interesting. I pay attention to Twitter when I'm watching debates. I only saw the the Affordable Care Act insurance question discussed on fact-checking sites and on the news websites. I did not see that uh, trending among uh, regular viewers and voters. Which is more evidence that the Twitter trends are kind of superficial. You know, one of the difficult questions uh, that this election presents to us all is whether voters even care about what's being said that's true or less true because all of the fact-checking organizations out there are constantly pointing out ways in which both campaigns are saying things that aren't quite true and yet it doesn't stop them from doing it and that tells you that they do it for a reason which is that it's beneficial not that it's harmful. Our goal is not to get politicians to stop lying. Uh, our goal is to inform democracy, and we are trying to give voters the information they need to make wise decisions. I think these are idealistic and hardworking people uh, who think they're doing something useful and, in fact, uh, unfortunately are not. Our findings are PolitiFact tends to blame Republicans more than Democrats for stretching the truth. The Washington Post fact checker faults Democrats and Republicans about equally. So if you've got two fact-checking groups that come to different conclusions, you've got a problem. When people say PolitiFact is biased, I always have to ask, in favor of which side? Because on any given day, we hear that from both sides. I think fact-checking is only going to grow. If politicians stop lying, it doesn't provide much occupational prospects for fact-checkers. Um, but I, I'm not worried about that. I think, I think we'll continue to have politicians lying, and so I think we've got good job security. I do hope all of you go to the polls. Have a good evening.